What's up everyone? Thanks for joining us today. We are checking out the 2022 Fuel EX8. This has just been released on Trek's website and we're going to check out what is new with the Fuel EX8 for 2022. It is a new model for the year, so it'll be interesting to see what they changed. One thing I have noticed is it is not advertising as GX or XT, which makes me think they're only going to one drivetrain with this option. We will have to see if another one comes out, but right now it looks like they are sticking with just this one. All right, so the Fuel EX8, if you didn't know already, is one of the most popular full suspension bikes out there. It is honestly one of the most ideal trail bikes for pretty much everyone who wants a really versatile full suspension and something that makes climbing really easily with these big 29s on it. And with an aluminum frame, it really combines a really good set of high-end parts with a great value, really. Although it keeps creeping up, we are just another $5,000 Canadian now. It's going to be interesting uh, what comes. Right now, it's only showing one color on the website, but I do believe there is a blue option coming. The Fuel X has long been Trek's bike to do it all. Whether you're going fast or coming down some gnarly climbs, this is going to be the bike you want to do it with. Now they've set it up with an aluminum frame on the 8 series and a 140mm Fox Rhythm 34mm stanchion fork and then about 130 mils of rear travel with that reactive damper which Fox helped develop with Trek. Now I think it is available for other people but it is something Trek worked on with them. Like I said this one here does not say whether it's Shimano or GX but it does come with the Shimano XT drivetrain, a 1x12 with that extra low 51 tooth climbing gear. It does have four piston brakes, which are also Shimano. And then interestingly enough, it comes with the 54 tooth Bontrager wheel set. So that means there is room for upgrade right there. It does have that Bontrager dropper post as well. So the size range has an extra small size this time with 27 and a half. The small gets the choice of 27 and a half or 29, and the medium all the way up to extra large only gets the choice of the 29 inch wheels. This does have Trex active braking pivot in the rear end there, really allowing um, the suspension to react to acceleration and braking forces individually. So it means you get a bit more control when you need it. The reactive shock, which Trek helped develop with Fox, just gives a more firm support um, when you're pedaling really heavily and then as soon as it really hits to the open stuff that's when the shock opens really wide so it's just a little better control throughout the whole shock itself but it makes sense with the being no women's setup on this one they have just got it as a curved top tube if you go in a small extra small the medium all the way up keep with that straight tube and that is just how it goes they all have a bit more of a sharper degree down but it's something that some people get bothered by and other people don't same as last year they do have that straight sharp with knock block so it makes for a stiffer frame but it does limit how far the steering can turn without the fork hitting so they've put in that knock block technology to allow that to not get hit on your frame you're not going to damage anything and that's something good i mean it's kind of annoying I've only ran into it like once myself, but it's nothing crazy. So something Trek does really well is the cable management. They definitely have a really nice system and it does clean it up really nice and make for very quiet um, cables. They don't bounce around inside a frame, which is really nice. It still has that. We are on boost 148 and 110, 110 on the front and 148 on the rear. So you get that real stiff feeling um, wheels even in a 29 like I said with the frame it is the alpha platinum aluminum so this is the highest end um, aluminum it means it's butted at multiple points hydroform cold extruded whatever that means and um, but that essentially gives it the maximum strength and minimum weight possible that they can do which is pretty nice with the frame you do get that internal routing on all the cables which is really nice a down tube guard iscg mounts so you can attach some sort of chain guide and stuff like that a magnesium rocker link does have the mineral link chip which changes the geometry when you flip it in the rear end at the shock there really changes what's going on to it 
So like I said, this comes with that Fox Rhythm 34 with 140 mil of travel. You can fit something as big as 150 millimeters in there. So you could tweak it out a little bit more and make it a little more downhill or heavier hitting if you're doing some big jumps or some big lines. It does give room for improvement if you want, but that does add weight and tweaks the geometry just slightly. These are Bontrager's Line Comp 30 wheels. So that's kind of Bontrager's nice aluminum set. They are tubeless ready. They come straight out of the factory tubeless. So you don't need to set it up. The shop will set it up for you. The rear, like I said, is just a 54 uh, tooth rapid drive engagement. So that is something you could upgrade potentially to the 108 if you wanted with just a very simple little upgrade kit. It does make a huge difference for pedal engagement. And it's something a lot of people I know have done. What's interesting change about this year is they've actually gone to the XR5 team issue tires. So this is that 120. TPI stuff and it is a 29 or a 27 and a half depending what size you get with a 2.5 inch wheel on both the front and rear but to go to the XR5 you're getting a bit heavier a little more grippy honestly it's taking into that minion trait where everyone's switching to minions so why not just put something which really looks like it now the max tie size on this although it comes with a 2.5 is actually a 2.6 you cannot fit something as big as a 2.8 on there the crank they pair up with that Shimano XT uh, derailleur system is the SLX, so pretty much the exact same level. It's all alloy with a 32 ring on it, so that's something nice. You will be able to fit something like a 32 up there, um, and even a bigger size you can fit is a 34, so that's something cool. That 51, like I say, is super low. So to a lot of people, it's almost too low. So it's really nice to see you can change that all the way up to a 34 because that makes it a fast pedaling bike. When you got 10 speed and a 34, you can actually keep a lot of speed. With the drop posts this year, they are all pretty much coming with 150 mil travel, medium and bigger. The small and extra small obviously have to come with a slightly smaller one just to frame size. And that is a 100 mil dropper. And these are the Bontrager line dropper. They have got better and better throughout the years. And they are just, they performing really well now with long lifespans ahead of them they are 31.6 mil um seat post size and um, which is good i mean there's nothing wrong with it we've seen a few bikes jump up to that bigger size but it doesn't really make much difference in my mind handlebars themselves are going to a 780 mil on the medium and bigger and 750 on the small and extra small the brakes are something i really like on this one so this is the mt4100 that is a really nice lever. It has a good actuation to it, really snappy, really on top of it. The MT-424 piston caliper stops wheels really nicely. Shimano does a good brake set. Shimano does a really good brake set, and I've never seen anyone really want to switch out of it. I mean, sure, Danny Macaskill, McCaskill makes people want to switch to Magura, but these ones are really powerful brakes. The rotors which they pair with them is a 180 mil and a 203 mil, so it's a combination on the front and rear. And overall, this bike is just over 30 pounds, 30.56 pounds and 13.86 kilos. So pretty lightweight, nothing crazy there. Um, so not too many changes from previous years, except for the fact that they've removed the GX version. So there is no SRAM version showing up yet. It makes me suspicious there won't be one because, um, well, this one doesn't acknowledge that it's the XT version. If this one on their website was called the Fuel X8 XT, it would make sense that there is a GX one coming. But right now, as it stands, there is no lettering on it. So, who knows? So the Fuel X8 is definitely that all-mountain, all-trail machine. If you want to pedal 15 kilometers of gravel to the trails and then absolutely shred them, this can do it. If you want to climb a mountain and then absolutely chase your buddies down on it, this can do it. It is a really versatile machine. It's got a good amount of travel without making it too heavy. Yeah, it could have maybe a little more, but for the most part, you don't use it anyway. It is there, but it is not something you really, really need. So I really think that everything you need in a bike, relatively speaking, is here. You can jump this, you can downhill this, you can cross country it, and it's going to be good minor tweaks you can make it better for each one of those things the frame geometry can be changed the tires can be changed you could go for lighter weight wheels to drop a good amount of weight 
but overall for a great bike which will last you forever it's uh it's going to handle itself really really well all right so this is a brief overview i like the fuel x8 it's honestly a pretty good value small price increase from last year with not too many noticeable changes um keep an eye out because we will be posting more all the other fuel models have came out and all just been pushed forward the fuel x5 and fuel x7 are the exact same bikes as last year they continued them it's really just these higher end ones which have changed and um, some of them haven't some of them have pretty messy uh, but thanks for watching and hopefully this uh, helped you out guys good luck